see that sister, we just pass by. And say, That's right. Home. And we allow these things to fester and to grow in our lives. And we kill ourselves. But not only that, we, we, we kill others as well. Yeah. For not allowing that love to pour out of us. We're not allowing the love to, to pour out. The way to kill condemnation is not to look at self at all. Right. You can't be concerned with self. It doesn't matter what the devil says about you. It doesn't matter. Because everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. Yes. You know, I, I heard a preacher say once that the devil doesn't always lie. But you know what? That's not true. Because what the preacher, and I understand what the preacher was saying. What he was trying to say, what he was trying to say, oh, was what he was trying to say is that sometimes the enemy takes your old life and tries to remember or remind you of who you were. But that is a lie too because you're not that person anymore. He's trying to present this person as if it's, it's still deep down inside as if this, this man is still waiting to come out. But that's not you anymore. For if you're in Christ, you're a new creature. So it doesn't matter who you were before. So any way you cut it, the devil is a liar. And I look at it, any way you slice it, it is a liar. And we void the warranty of God on our lives when we allow ourselves to listen to that condemnation and we, we think that we can't get get, get any, any further than where we are right now. You know, I'll share with you some, something. The last two and a half weeks before this time of prayer and fasting were a time of just hell. Can I call it that? Amen. Just that misery. Sorry? You call it what you want. Misery. It was, why? Because I allow myself to listen to the enemy. See, he comes in subtle ways and he comes in different packages and different, different, uh, different manners. And he gets us to look at self. He gets us to look at ourselves and say, oh yes, well, you know, who do you think you are? Or sometimes he comes in the affirmative, he flips the script a little bit because he knows we're too wise for that. And sometimes he'll say, oh yes, well, you know, you preached such a great message last week. Oh, oh, what? What a powerful preacher you are. And he'll start to big you up and then we get the reverse. We start to get full of pride. Yes. We start to get pride and say, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not so bad, you know. Yeah. I didn't really want this whole preaching gig, but you know what? I, I'm doing a, I'm doing a good job. Yeah. And then we start to look at self and it's just as bad as the flip side. Because yeah. the whole point is we've taken our eyes off the one who's given us the power to do all things. And we start to look at ourselves. And we we start to, to look at ourselves and pick up ourselves and think we start, church, we are nothing. Yeah. We are but dust. Yeah. But thanks be to God who yeah. always causes us to triumph. Yeah. Thanks be to God who's given us power to be able to do a work. Thanks be to God that his warranty is not limited. Yeah. That no matter how much I messed up, no matter how much I fall, the righteous man falls seven times, but he gets yeah. back up. on our lives just because we're looking at self because it's not us who does redemption it's not us who does the refixing and the remolding but it's Christ and Christ alone and if he says you know what I can make something of you then don't tell him that he doesn't know what he's doing for he is the manufacturer he is the one who makes his body and he is able to do all things exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask for things sometimes we quote that scripture we're thinking of not working, it's effective. If you want to get it fixed or you want to get it redeemed for a new one, you've actually either got to pick up the phone or go down there. You've got to bring that which you have. Whether you whether you send it, whether you go in person, you've got to bring that which you have and present it to the people and say, here, I need a new one. Here, this is broken. I need you to fix this. It's the same thing we need to do with the Lord. For he knows where we are. He knows that we've used uh, our bodies, our lives, or something other than what he intended. But he's not going to redeem us unless we come to him. Amen. You know, this week was so powerful because we were pouring out yes. before the Lord and declaring who we are and just putting it all out there. And I don't know about you, but there was a, a deliverance that came. We started just to, to pour out. And 
you know, sometimes you think you pour out everything, but you go by the Lord and ask, Lord, what else? And they show you something else, and then you, just, you pour out. Yes. But in order to be able to, to, to get that warranty, to benefit from that warranty that the Lord has, you've got to present yourself. Right. The Bible we talked about in Romans, uh, about Paul says, presenting yourself a living sacrifice. Holy. Holy and acceptable. And acceptable. Yes. Which is your reasonable service. Not, not, oh, if you feel like it. But that is your reasonable service. If you go, you know, go to the, the store and you say, I've had, you know, this laptop. If I just go with part of the laptop, they're not going to give me any one. Because I'm only giving half of what I receive. I'm only giving one portion. But I've got to bring it all back, broken pieces and all. I've got to bring it all back in order to, to be able to benefit from this warranty. It's the same thing with the Lord. I can't expect to give the Lord just the pieces that I want to give him. I can't just expect to give him that which is convenient for me to let go of. So I can't just give him what I think. I ought to give. But he says you need to present your whole oh, self. Yes. Everything. Yes. Everything that you've done. Every, all the broken pieces. All the yes. shards. All the stuff. That, the nasty stuff that you've tucked away in the corner of your heart. You need to let it all out before the Lord. Because otherwise he can't make you anew. If there's something missing then he can't make you again another vessel the way he wants it. Because there'll be something missing. You've got to present your whole self. Whole self. I'm coming down this morning. That's right. You've got to present your whole self to him. Yes. Otherwise, the warranty doesn't hold up. There's one other condition. Like we said, when you get a warranty, you always have to check the fine print. And there's one other condition. And that is time. Most warranties that you get have a certain time limit. For instance, this computer, going back to the same example that I bought, is it's a one-year limited warranty. And then I purchase another two-year warranty. So as long as anything happens within that two years. Three years. Three years. Thank you. Again, math is never my forte. And if anything happens within those three years, you know, I've got the spill proof and all that. So if anything happens within those three years, the computer is covered. My mom can bring it back to the store and they'll either fix it or they'll give it a new one. It's covered. But if she should happen to have problems, after those three years are up, she's on her own. That's right. Yes. She's gonna, and you know, that's usually the time when the, the, the problem yes. starts is after the warranty is done. Yes. But if anything should happen after the three years is up, then it's done. The warranty that the Lord has for us, the warranty that the Lord has is a lifetime warranty. My God. But it's just that, it's a lifetime warranty. And what that means is at any point in your life when you recognize that, yes, I'm broken. Yes, I need to be fixed. Yes, I need to be renewed. Yes, I can't keep going the same way that I've been going. Any time in your life when you recognize it and you're willing to come before the Lord, He will accept you. That's right. But it's a lifetime warranty. So when your life is over, when your life is done and you breathe your last breath, it's done. And see, the thing about it is, you know, when you've got a warranty for two or three years, at least you know the exact date when it'll be over. So you know I've got until, you know, September 23rd, you know, 2014 to be able to redeem this warranty. But the thing about it is, with God's warranty, you don't know when your time is up. None of us knows the day of the hour of the coming of the Son of Man. Right. And moreover, we don't even know the day of our own appointment with death. So either way, you're racing against the clock. Time is ticking. For we always said that at some point, this mortal body is going to give out. And you never know. You know, we, we have dreams of retirement and living to a certain age, but you never know. Uh, someone was telling me the story. My mother was telling me the story about this beautiful girl at one of the churches in Connecticut. She's a teacher, just graduated from school and just started her first job as a teacher and her teaching little kids. And she went to bed on Wednesday night and just never woke up on Thursday. Young, no health problems, no nothing obviously wrong, just fell asleep and never woke up. You never know when your time is up. And sometimes we have this grandeur of thinking that we have all eternity, we have all of life to, to play with. We have all of life to, 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 to carry on and to do what we want. But this warranty is for a lifetime. That's right. But you never know when your lifetime will be up. That's right. Stand with me this morning. I am confident. 
You know, I had a, a stereo that I purchased a while ago that I had, and it was it was a great, you know, five CD changer. You know, you can mix and match all these songs and make your great mixes, and really great if you're a music aficionado. I had a one-year warranty on it, and around nine months, it started giving me trouble. But being the independent person that I was, I thought I could fix it. I thought I could fix it. And you know what, for a while, I actually did. I, you know, I kind of, you should see me, I had the screwdrivers off, and I took out the back, and I was rearranging things, and I actually got it to work. But see, the thing is, it only worked for a little while. That's right. It was only a temporary fix. And then, as I got closer to the warranty being up, I was so convinced that I, would keep, I, I could fix it again, because I did it once, so obviously I could do it again. I got, I got it to work once, so I could get it to do it again. And so I waited. And I waited. And I waited. Then one day I decided I was going to fix it, and then I realized, you know what, this is just way beyond me. I can't fix this. I need some, I need some help. And so I got ready to call in the warranty, only to realize that the warranty was up. It was too late. That's right. It didn't matter how much I tried to argue with customer service, how nice I tried to be and say, well, you know, it didn't matter. The warranty was up, and that was it. I had a year to be able to turn it in and to get a new stereo so I could keep listening to my CDs. But because I waited too long, I missed, yes, I was stubborn. Thank you, sister. I was stubborn. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Confession is good for the soul. I was stubborn and I missed it. Now that was just a CD player and even though it was sad that I wasn't able to do my mixes and whatnot, how much worse would it be if that's the same thing that I did with my life? That's right. Because see, so many times we think we can fix our lives. We think that we can arrange things, we can make things look nice and put things in order. My God. But there comes a time when you realize that, you know what, this is out of my hands. I can't fix myself. But if you wait until it's too late, if you wait until your life is up and the time has come and you have not turned in that warranty, if you've not presented yourself before God to be made anew, then he'll say the same thing to you. Depart from me because I knew you not. You were too late. Church, the word has come to us today because the Lord doesn't want us to wait until it's too late. Amen. He loves us so much that he's given us the opportunity, no matter what we've done, even if we haven't used these lives or what we ought to have used them for, he's willing to take us back and to make us again another vessel. But it's up to you. It's up to me. The ball is in our court. We have the power to say, Lord, I'm a mess. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, my life without you is worthless. But, 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 I want you. I want you to make something out of this life. I want you to use me for what you desire to use me. I want you to do what you desire to do with this life. That's right. But don't wait until it's too late. I'm not going to give an exhaustive altar call, but the Lord, the word has already gone forth, and I'm not going to add anything to it. I'm only going to say, as the Lord leads, that if you are finding yourself in that state right now, right. Come. come. Don't hesitate. Don't think about it. For too often, we think too much about these things. We up. think too much, but the time to act is now, for today is a day of salvation. Today is the day where you can make your calling and election sure. For when you step out these doors, you don't know what's going to happen. Right. When you step out, even you may not even have a chance to step out these doors. They may be carrying you out on a stretcher. Amen. And sometimes we don't like to think about this, but church, we need to re recognize that we are mortality. Right. We need to recognize that we're mere mortal men and we are Amen. living on borrowed time. Yeah. So I say one more time, if this a message has touched your heart, then come. Oh. Don't think, but just come. Right. And allow the Lord to make you again another, another vessel. Yeah. Come now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.